First up, Jim McKeith is going to talk about FireDAC in 10.1 Berlin. So, Jim, take it away. Hello, this is Jim McKeith, lead developer evangelist and engineer from Brocadero Technologies. I'm going to talk to you really quick about FireDAC database access. So FireDAC is our cross-platform, high-performance native database access framework. It works across all platforms and with a huge variety of databases. It has a lot of amazing features, and I'm not going to even get into a quarter or a tenth of these, honestly, today. Uh, I'll point out a couple things really cool. There's an in-memory data set with local SQL. This is so cool, you can load stuff into this in-memory data set from any place, whatever it happens to be. Uh, flat file, in-memory data, whatever. You can also then do local SQL across that data set and other data sets. So even if you have a data set from another framework, if it's a T data set descendant, you can do a SQL query across these in-memory data sets, doing like a join across data from multiple databases. That is so incredible. I can't tell you how many times I've wished I could do that in the past. Basically, FireDAC has all the features you need built into it. I was just talking to someone the other day and they said they really needed to uh, add monitoring support because they're having some strange behavior in the database and he expected to spend like a couple days adding this to the application and went and looked and like, oh, look, boom, I've turned on monitoring in FireDAC and it was done in just a few minutes. Uh, lots of great features. You can see here's just a few of them. And just like FireDAC has lots of features across a lot of all the platforms, it also supports a lot of databases. Here's a list of databases it supports. Actually, I'm not sure if this is a complete list, but one thing I will point out is that even though this is a fairly extensive list, if there's another database that is not supported here, thanks to DB Express and ODBC, you can access even more databases. So today we're just gonna talk about some of the big main databases in use in enterprises today, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server and MongoDB. Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server are really the big dogs in the database arena. A lot of the enterprise jobs I've had in the past have used either Oracle or SQL Server. For some people, they're interchangeable in their minds. Other people are very dedicated to one or the other. It's almost a religious thing for them. So that's why we're looking at those two. Very big, very popular in the enterprise field. MongoDB is a newer database. It's part of the NoSQL database, new type of databases going on right now. It, it's focused on the idea of dealing with data in collections instead of tables. And the idea is that those collections are not always the same. They can vary what fields a row has from record to record. If you talk to the MongoDB people, they're like, oh, you don't need any other database, just use MongoDB. And if you talk to uh, Oracle or SQL Server, people, they're going to say, oh, you don't need MongoDB because you can do that with Oracle or SQL Server. So there is some overlap between MongoDB and the regular SQL databases. But really, I think when you get an understanding of the advantages and disadvantages of each, you can find a way that you can include all of these and utilize them for their strengths. And like I said, a lot of stuff we're going to talk about will apply to the other databases as well. But we're just going to focus on these three right now. So working with Oracle, one of the great things about FireDAC is it has the same components across all the databases. So you can use the same table, the same query components, etc. But it also unlocks features specific to each database. So this is some of the things specific to Oracle that you can do with FireDAC. And there's a list of some samples that we ship that you can check out that show how to do those specific operations with Oracle as well. Very cool that it's it kind of gives you the ability to operate at different levels, which is one of the things I love about Rad Studio, Delphi, and C++ builders. You can operate at this high level where you're not so much caring about the platform or the database you're dealing with, but then you can reach down and grab the metal, as it were, you know, and get down there and make those calls and do the things that are specific to the platform or database you're running on. Here's some of the things that are specific to SQL Server. And again, this isn't a complete list. It's just a few things that hopefully will uh, get you in, get your interest going. A few of the samples that we ship with as well that are specific to SQL Server. And then MongoDB. Now, with MongoDB, really, we support all of MongoDB. During Code Rage, I did two extensive sessions on MongoDB and still did not completely cover everything you could do with MongoDB. It's a really powerful database. If you're not familiar with it, I would suggest taking a look at it and kind of get more familiar with it so that you can better understand what it can bring for you. Pretty much everything you see in MongoDB 
is supported through FireDAX MongoDB support. It's very great, very powerful, lots of great things. For example, geospatial indexes and geospatial queries allows you to do uh, queries and say, hey, how close is this latitude and longitude to another latitude and longitude? And it takes into account curvature of the earth and everything. Lots of cool stuff. That's not unique to MongoDB. It's available in other databases as well, but still a very, very cool feature. So let's take a look at some of this in action. So I'm gonna show you how to connect to Oracle. We're gonna start with the Data Explorer. And if you come over here, you can expand either FireDAC or DB Express. We're gonna use FireDAC right now. And come down here and find Oracle Server. Now this is a list of all the databases that FireDAC supports. Also notice there is ODBC and DB Express, which unlocks even more databases that you can support through those indirection layers. So under Oracle, we're going to, right now we have nothing under it, so we're gonna right click on it and say add new connection. And I'm gonna call it HR for human resources. This is gonna open up the FireDAC connection editor and select the driver ID Aura, which is the one you use for Oracle. We need to specify the database. You can do this a number of ways. If you have your TNS name set up, you can just specify the alias there or use a full definition like you see here that ex explicitly specifies the service name, uh, host, protocol, etc. So we're gonna use that right now in here. There's actually like three or four other options as well for things you can do. We're gonna specify a username and a password. Notice it supports OS authentication. And I'm gonna specify the default schema and current schema as HR as well. One thing that's really cool about FireDAC though as well, is you can actually come over here to the SQL script tab and you can run a SQL query actually once I connect to it. Let me connect to it, test. There we go, connection established. And I can come over here and I can run a query against the database. So duels the mystery table that always has one column, one row with an X in it and run that here. So you can actually check and say, hey, am I in the right database? Is things working like I expected? So it's more than just a simple test, but actually going in and querying the data all from the screen here. Lots of great options. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And so now we've created the entry in Data Explorer for Oracle. So let's make a new application, new multi-device application. Works the same on VCL or FireMonkey. I'm just doing uh, FireMonkey for now. And here's a list of all the tables. Now, notice that it includes all the other tables here and other namespaces, but, or the schemas, but it has these, these are the HR schemas. Cause I mouse over and you can see they're .hr, .tables, .jobs, but it has the HR taken off because I told it that those were assumed that it was that schema. So I can come in here and let's say, I wanna see my employees. I can come here and see what rows are in there. Take a look at that. So I could drag just an individual row or I could grab a whole table. Let's do a whole table. And let's connect to the database. Let's get some of that fantastic design time data going here and bind visually. And there we go. So let's hide those non-visual components. And we can run this on Windows and see all of our data. So there we go, just really quick, we've connected to an Oracle database. We've pulled some data in there through the Data Explorer, bound it to a grid, and are now displaying to the user at runtime. Uh, this does require that you have the Oracle driver installed on your machine. I found that the full install works better than the instant client thin install, but you may know more about Oracle than I do. It's been a while since I've used it, and you may be able to get it working without using the full install. So I'll show you how to connect to Microsoft SQL Server. We're gonna to go to the Data Explorer here and we'll expand FireDAC, come on here to Microsoft SQL Server. Right now I have nothing defined here. You may have one already. If not, just come here and we'll say Northwind. And it brings up the connection editor with MS SQL selected. So I can come here and the database we're gonna to connect to is on server, put the server IP address here. Database is going to be Northwind and SA master key. Don't tell me what my password. All right, I think if I did that right, I hit test. Connection established successfully. At this point, we're able to connect. There's lots of other options here OS authentication, Mars. You can do uh, control the encryption. 
uh, default catalogs schemas, current catalog schemas, et cetera, is all available too. So once we're done with that, we can come over here and expand Northwind. We see the tables, the views, and the stored procedures. Uh, there's all our views. Here's all our tables. Let's go ahead and make a, now we'll do a VCL application this time. What the heck? Mix it up and we'll display our employees. So let's go ahead and select our table, connect it, and I'll bind it visually. Although it works with either type, any type of binding um, you want to use. If you want to use uh, traditional database binding, you can do that as well. And let's hide those non-visual controls. And we'll run this. There we go, connected to SQL Server through Data Explorer, pulled some data down onto a form, created, created an application, and ran it to display to the user. I have installed the native SQL driver on Windows. On the newer versions of Windows usually have an older version of the SQL driver already installed, but for best results, I suggest installing the latest SQL driver from Microsoft. In addition to traditional RDBMSs, Data Explorer can also connect to NoSQL databases, MongoDB. Just come in here under FireDAC, MongoDB, add new connection. We'll call it restaurants as our friendly name. And we just define it here. The driver ID is called Mongo. We give it a server IP address. Since I'm not connecting to a local server, it's a remote IP address. If I'm using username and password, I can provide those here. In this case, I'm not. You can use Mongo Advanced to pass advanced parameters to MongoDB during the connection. And you can optionally specify a database as well. We go ahead and hit test, and we've connected successfully to MongoDB. So now we've created our restaurants connection here, and I can expand this, and it shows the option to show tables, views, and procedures, but there's not really the concept of tables, views, and procedures in MongoDB. It's different. MongoDB has collections instead of tables. When you know more about MongoDB, you'll understand why that's different. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this like it is, and I'll show you how we'll connect to it. I'm going to say new, we'll do a fire monkey application. This works with uh, VCL as well. And we're going to drag our connection over here. Once we've done that, we're going to come over here and we're going to find a Mongo query. You know, notice we have a Mongo data set query and pipeline. These components are specific to MongoDB because like I said, MongoDB is different. It doesn't have traditional data sets. It doesn't have tables. And so the way you work with them is a little differently. So that's why you have custom components for it. Uh, a pipeline is used to da transform data. It's very, very cool technology. And let's specify a database name here. So it's already got our connection here. So a database is test. So you notice it has enumerated all the databases available to us and the collection is restaurants. Again, it's enumerated that and so it connects to it autom or finds that automatically. And now we'll connect to it. Once we've done that, we're gonna bind this. We'll bind visually. And we'll just uh, link to new control, the grid. Okay. And here we go. We've connected to our MongoDB database, got design time data. So now we're going to run this for our user. Again, you have to install the MongoDB client. That's all explained in the doc wiki. And one thing that's really cool here, and I'll expand this so you can see this, is MongoDB has the concept of embedded collections. So a collection can have a collection mm -hmm. embedded in it. In this case, we have a, the address is embedded. And so we have the coordinates, we have the street address, zip code, street name, et cetera, all embedded in here. The grid's able to handle that automatically. Very cool. And that's all there is to connecting to MongoDB. Put together a list of resources for you to take advantage of if you want to learn more about how to use FireDAC. This is a list to the FireDAC Skill Sprint replay. It's a YouTube playlist. It has quite a few videos in it. There's a highlight of some of the topics that are covered there. Definitely take a look at this. You can go through and find the video what you're looking for. The main presentation is about 15 minutes usually, and then there will be a Q&A afterwards. So a lot of great information to learn about some of these specific topics for FireDAC. Here are some replays from Code Rage 10. There's the DB scripting session, and then also the two MongoDB sessions. So if you really want to dive into MongoDB, check those out there. They're available in both C++ and Object Pascal. And there's a fire or migration to FireDAC session. And it's actually kind of a language agnostic there at the bottom. 
Code Rage 9, there was a tips, tricks, and news session for both Object Pascal and C++ Builder, and then a session on heterogeneous data systems integration. And here are some doc wiki links for you. There's the main doc wiki link for FireDAC, as well as links for working with Oracle, SQL Server, and MongoDB. And lastly, there is a link to 145 different FireDAC articles. It's kind of the category index there. So if you want to find something specific on FireDAC, you can find that there. If you didn't catch any of these links, be sure to visit the page for the webinar replay. Thanks, Jim.